Hello, welcome to Straw Family Farm, take two. I'm Christy. So, in the chapel, we have Matthew 10, 8. Freely thee have received, freely give. So, I'm counting my blessings and helping where I can, giving them myself and time, um, that kind of stuff. When you work in customer service, it is what it is. You know, you take a lot of, of tongue lashings, but anyway, not going to talk about work today. Got a lot going on, but not a whole lot of projects, if that makes sense, just because I haven't gotten to them because I've been working on some other things. So let's just look here um, on the Geo. It's amazing how when you take something out of timeout, it just clicks. And that's what this has done. It was busting my chops before and now not so much. Um, so I did <clears throat> the rows that they said. And it is big, but I have this much yarn left and I did rip out, I did the final row and tacked it together and I wanted it a little bit bigger. So I'm going to try and put on about five more rows so that it drapes a little bit more. So I want it drapey. Both sides are that way, but, and I have had on the final row right before stitching it together. And then I just kind of tacked it together, the shoulders, and let it drape. And I was like, eh, I want it a little bigger. So, and I've got, I think, plenty of yarn. So I'm going to try five rows. I'll make it, you know, big enough. I'll make it as big as I can with the yarn that I have. So, um, I really like the way it's working up. And now that I have it down, I don't have to think so much, which is what was kicking my rear to begin with because she connected in the middle of a row all of her rows instead of starting in a corner start in the middle it's I get it now but oh. so and I'm not even sure I'm following the pattern exactly I'm just kind of doing it to look like hers and read the pattern it's like okay I think that's what it is so that's what I'm doing so might not be exact but it's close enough for me okay let's see where to begin it's been a whirlwind week um i did a little spinning okay uh so first i'm going to try and i have my wheel right here and i found an art bat that i had made years ago it was like one of three that i had done let me take this off of here let me just i forget that, that moves so I've been doing this and what I'm finding is that it is easier to do a consistent yarn because that's what most of my customers want. So it's easier to do a consistent yarn, sorry, okay, than it is to do one like thick and thin with bubbles and just, I want an art yarn. So yeah, it's a little challenging but I've got eight ounces I believe to do and it's what I carded up the other day it was that artsy thing um, it's good for me to, to have to challenge myself to do something that I'm not normally doing so and I do have a, a project in mind for that we'll see how it goes um, so I spun on that and then I got to play just a little bit uh, because like I said, it's been a crazy week. I made you a clip to update you on where I've been spinning, I guess. Here it is. Okay, so the love seat and couch are gone and look who has come out to play. Big Bertha. And of course I oiled her up real good and dusted her off and um okay maybe did a little spinning well you gotta line her up right you gotta make sure that the uh drive band which i need a new one just so people can see this is wearing out there's a knot here i think there's a knot someplace yep down here so big bertha needs a new drive band but it's just a cotton strand and i will get one um but of course you have to line her up and all that so i had to play with her and she looks beautiful in her new corner and i mean what more does a girl need i got my recliner 
wine rack with wine glasses, and Big Bertha. Huh, the perfect corner for me, I guess. Yay, Big Bertha! <laughs> I love my walking wheel. Um, I'm not as proficient on it as I would like to be, and I haven't spun on her probably in the last year, year and a half, um, just because I didn't have some place to set it up. So now we have a place. She is right at home, the chair. I'm thinking about putting my crochet basket over there, but I use it more over by the couch where I'm, because that's where I sit to watch TV. I don't know why, but anyway, that corner is now utilized, it's much better, and the old couch and love seat are gone. So, um, the other thing that I was working on is the sewing machine, and I have it all cleaned out. It's gotten a good drink here. You know what? I made you a clip on that too. Okay, so a little update on this. It's been all oiled up. I've cleaned out the drawers. I found lots of treasures, um, and I'm actually going to stage it. I found the bobbins that go to it, scissor sharpeners, old push pin, uh, measuring tape. There's an actual cloth measuring tape in here somewhere. Metal scissors. These are um, buttonhole scissors. There's the cloth metal uh, measuring tape. Just some old stuff. And I've started to stage it with the old stuff. I fixed this, as you can tell. And then I staged it. And all of those are old wooden bobbins that I had. Um, the thread is kind of breaking on it now. So I don't really use them. Put the belts in their own drawer. Um, this is all zippers. So some of them old... All, a lot of them are metal teeth. So this is up. It's been cleaned up a little bit. I've got to figure out how to get between the leg and the wooden case. So we'll see about that. But then, and this is other stuff that I found in there. I'm still sorting through. Uh, this was stuff that was just in there and I put it in a tote so I can go through it at leisure because none of it has to do with sewing or that machine. And then I found this piece and it was roommate's grandmother's and it is going to be the next one that I start on I think um, it needs a good drink of oil the drawers do not slide in and out um, if you look behind the TV I just switched this out there was a big um, chest of drawers here and I switched it out if you look back here I don't know if you can see but the frame is broke the old mirror is still good but the frame is broke I tied it with a pretty little scarf and when I can slide it out lay it flat um, then I'm going to re-glue that and it will be fine I'm just going to use wood glue slide it all up in there and um, I think I need to flip it over so that the weight of gravity works with me but for now um, it's just in here it has not been touched this is the way it was found um, we cleaned out the drawers there's still some stuff in some of the drawers that was his dad's um, these go to the other dresser so yeah just stuff like that, knobs, whatever. But you can see the drawers push way in and they shouldn't. And then it should line up even with that. But we're going to get there. It will get there and it'll be beautiful when I'm done, I hope. So these pieces are roommate's family pieces. So they're not going anywhere. We're just going to figure out how to make use of them better once they're done. Okay. So, in that clip, you also saw that I found another antique. And these things are roommates, families. Um, they've been in their family for generations. And they're just beautiful. They, they have been, they were stored in here um, when no one was living here. And mm, it, it takes its toll on everything. So, it needs, everything needs to be oiled up, let it expand a little bit. And then see what we need to tweak, what we need to wax. Um, and by wax, I mean drawers slide in and out. They used wood and then they used um, beeswax to wax them, to make them slide. Um, there might be a couple of stoppers needed in that um, dresser because the drawers slide in too far. But with the expansion, that may be, that might solve that problem. Um, but yeah, they're just older and dried, but they're beautiful. And I'm going to fix that mirror. That mirror, the glass is the original glass. So that's why I'm going to work on it next. Um, 
so that's what I've been working around around the house. But there was an event that took place that is still impacting my life. Uh, it's not a bad thing. Not a bad thing at all. Um, so, it, well, it's not great, but it's not bad. Okay, so um, Sunday night, Monday morning, I got a phone call at 2 in the morning. And if you're a parent, you know that makes your blood run cold. Just to see the word son on your phone at 2 in the morning will bring you to your knees. Okay? Now, I answer the phone, and the first words out of his mouth are, I'm so sorry to wake you this late at night, but I have a problem. He was headed from his girlfriend's house. They had gone to a roping. He dropped her off, had a truck and trailer on, was going up. He had just passed um, my house and was at a gas station. And the truck had squeaked. There was a pop and it was squeaking. He was trying to figure it out. And when he popped the hubcap off, the whole hub came off the front tire of the truck. So he called me and said, can I come to your house? So he came here, got the horses here. We have plenty of land to put the horses out on. Um, he did leave them tied just loosely so they can graze grass, you know. But the thing was is that he uh, didn't want to have to chase him down the next morning because he was leaving for Texas Monday. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So he uh, got here. He had to drive 10 to 15 miles per hour to limp it back about less than 10 miles. Um, and it took him quite a long time. It was probably 2.30, 2.45 when he pulled up here. Got the horses situated, got him in. We decided that he was going to go in and take a little bit of a nap, get some sleep because he'd been up all day. Um, he hadn't planned on this happening. He was going to sleep late, but now he couldn't. So I get up at 5.30. I let him sleep till 6. Got him up, fed him some waffles. And then when roommate and I went to work, he stayed here and used roommate's dad's old shop that's full of tools. And he worked on the truck. Um, problem being, he never could get this one thing off, so he couldn't fix it. So he called, got Eddie to come get the horses, took the horses back home. Eddie brought him another horse coop that was going with him to Texas. Called Macy. Macy came and got him and coop from here. Headed down to Glenn's, met up with Glenn. They went to Texas, and he got back yesterday sometime and he's got to get things done around his house and then he's gonna call me and by noon he'll be back down here to work on his truck which is sat here all week so he has all the parts we've gathered up parts we've done everything he just has to get that little round thing off and then put it all back together and he's good so that is what's gonna go on today but let me tell you, that two in the morning phone call can stop your heart, make your blood run cold, and especially when you see that. I just have him in my phone as son because if something happens to me, he's my emergency contact. He's the only one in like that because he's my emergency contact. So when, if something were to happen, the police can scroll through. Um, he comes up as emergency contact and it says son so they know who they're dealing with um yeah it scared me to death he kept apologizing anyway he spent the day here um i was at work i came home at lunch fed him a sandwich he was still working he'd gone and got the parts then he calls me says can I use your shower i said sure so he showered here and everything so that he could leave with macy it was not a good thing, but I told him if he's not rushed today, maybe he can stop, think it through, and get it. But he was under a time crunch, and he was two hours late getting to Glenn's, but they didn't have to rope till the next day. They were just traveling on Monday. So it worked out. It's going to work out. He'll be down here today. We'll probably have lunch together. Um, I'm going to do grocery shopping on the way back. I've got to go pick him up because... 
he doesn't have a truck. The green truck is in the shop that he's been working on. The silver truck is outside the shop and the white truck is still over waiting on a fuel something that has been sitting there that was supposed to be done in November. It was supposed to be done by Thanksgiving, but then they couldn't get one part. They're waiting on one part, do it all. So it's sitting there and they keep, he calls monthly and he's like, so where are we at on the truck? So where are we at on the truck? And pretty much, it's just still sitting there. So as soon as they get the part, we were told again that it would be the end of March. I haven't heard from him. So, and it's not his fault. It's not the mechanic's fault at all. He's got all the parts except for one. So, um, and it happens to be one of the main ones. But, so I'm going to go pick him up. We're going to stop in Homeland and both do our grocery shopping. I'll make sure he's got groceries. I've got groceries. I'll bring him down here and then he can take his groceries home when he uh, goes home in his truck. <laughs> That's terrible, I know. But it is what it is. So he doesn't have a vehicle. He has been gone all week. So you know the milk is spoiled. You know that the he has no food in that house. That I mean, dry goods. But anyway, so... I'm going to stop at Homeland on the way back. Him and I will both do our grocery shopping. And then we'll come here. He'll work on the truck. And then we'll see how long it takes. Um, it is what it is. You know? So, that went on all week. Running around getting parts. Tuesday I had to work. There was an incident at work. Um, there was a cat that came in for a spay. And the owner didn't tell us it's a feral cat they had trapped it well the girls went to handle it she got bit she got scratched up and we have a policy about that so um we had to follow protocol she had to go to the er yeah it was fun and then of course she was upset that it even happened she's like that's not right anyway so it is what it is it's just been an eventful week I've gotten a lot done, but not a lot of fiber things done. Um, a little spinning here, a little spinning on Big Bertha. Um, as you saw in that video, I'm gonna stage that sewing machine. And so I've been gathering things that I find that are older sewing items and putting them in there. So it's been fun and I am dealing with, but kind of just a little bit slower the ducks are doing amazing um the only problem that i have is something is getting her eggs she lays an egg a day and something is cracking the side of it and eating out of it i think it might be magpies so i think she lays early in the day so i'm gonna try and catch it this weekend and break the cycle uh don't know when i get down there before the creature does that takes her eggs i get eggs so when I'm working, of course I leave here, it's still dark in the mornings, so I can't really, yeah. But um, they all three come up to me for dinner at night. I only feed them once a night. Um, then as it warms up, I'm gonna go to feeding them once every other night or, you know, um, I'm gonna feed them less and less and wean them off that corn and that way because there's plenty of stuff in that pond and that's what they're there for so and they are fat and sassy let me tell you oh my goodness they're they clean themselves up they look so much better when they first got here uh, and the two males were actually well taken care of they were just dirty they just you know now they're in an actual they've never seen a pond before so now they're in an actual pond and they can clean all the time so they look immaculate I'm like wow cool so Anyway, I'm going to get off here. I've got to, I still have my sweats on, so I'm going to go put some jeans on, um, socks and shoes, be ready when RJ calls. Uh, I'm stripping all the beds today. I've done so far three loads of laundry and I uh, still have the laundry to do. I just, I don't know. It's been musky in here. It, it stormed and whenever it stormed, this house was shut up for so long that it just seems damp and musky in here so i'm going through cleaning everything and and we'll go from there 
but pretty much it's just an RJ and a laundry day and I'll see if I'll probably hold off uploading this until he comes maybe at the end of this you might see a clip of RJ you know we'll see what I can get done um, he might be too busy and it might just be a video of him working and him saying hello you know I don't know so we'll see what he does and I'll see if I can get you a clip if there's a clip of RJ it'll be right here RJ what are you doing working on my truck why uh, the tire fell apart <laughs> yeah, basically. okay so let's step in out of the wind and you can tell everybody what you've been doing just real quick you've been rodeoing traveling yep How's that been? What, what states have you been in? I've been to Florida, Georgia, Alabama, Texas, everywhere in between. Been to Memphis. Did okay? Yeah, did okay. Not great. Expenses were high, huh? Yeah. Fuel costs, huh? Yep. If you didn't have to do that and feed your horse, you'd have been fine, huh? Well, I could feed the <laughs> horse for a long time, I would have spent in fuel. <laughs> All right, so today you're going to fix this truck, hopefully have some dinner with mom and call it a day? Yep. All right, get back to work. Okay, so if you saw him, you saw him. If you didn't, you didn't. Um, with that, I am going to say goodbye. See you next week. Um, I'm hoping to have the Geo finished, and I haven't worked on that sweater, so I probably will try and work on that some this week so but I do want to get these bats spun up and I want to spin some more on Big Bertha so yeah all right I'm off of here I will talk to you guys later and I pray everything is going great in y'all's lives and thanks for watching